This series of videos is about one of my favourite games to have worked on, SWAT Global Strike Team. It was developed by Argonaut Games, they of Star Fox and Croc fame. It was released in 2003 for both Xbox and PlayStation 2. It got an average score of 69 on Metacritic. Not the best score ever, but also not embarrassing. Over the next few videos I'm going to talk about how we came up with the idea for the game, how that changed as the project went on, what tools we built and used to make it, and as much as I can remember from the programming point of view. I was one of the graphics coders, so my memory is somewhat skewed in the graphics direction, but I'll try and cover everything. This series of videos represents my recollection of what happened during development, which started in about 2000 and continued up to the release in 2003. It may be missing things, missing key people, or may even be downright wrong. If it is, and you know different, please let me know and I'll post corrections in the description. Where I clearly remember who did what, I'll try and attribute stuff to them. If something isn't attributed, it doesn't mean that I did it, it just means that I don't remember who did. SWAT started out life as a Dreamcast prototype of an idea that was kicking around between Sefton Hill, now director at Rocksteady Studios, Dave Taylor, now senior art director at EA, and me. It was called Cleaners and was going to be a top-down sort of turn-based action game. You were to control a band of killers, the eponymous Cleaners, doing contract killings for shady governments in the future. We used the Red Dog engine and did a few static renders and camera flybys. We were given the go-ahead by Argonaut Management to develop the idea further, but as the Dreamcast was effectively a dead console by then, sadly, we started work on an Xbox engine and the tools to go alongside it. The game quickly moved towards being more a first-person shooter, with its unique selling point being two semi-autonomous sidekicks, a sharp-shooting assassin and a tech specialist able to hack into security systems. We made some videos demoing the main characters, some test environments and scenarios. We took them along to the Electronics Entertainment Expo, E3, and pitched it to publishers, but there wasn't much interest in the idea. I found a couple of videos on an old CD. This video shows a render of the three main characters. The leader, the assassin and the tech guy. The lighting is pretty dark and moody, so it's tough to see what's going on. In this video, you can see that the leader character, the player, has ordered the other two characters to take down the targets. Things to note in this video. The annoying idle animation of the main character. The glitch in the shadow algorithm that causes big black spikes of black to emanate from the weapons of the other characters. This was a bug in the stencil shadow system, which we fixed soon after. Although the cleaners idea didn't get much of a look in at E3, Sierra, now Activision, saw the technology and were impressed enough to talk to us about doing a SWAT game for them. This would be the first console SWAT game, so we felt we should distance ourselves a little bit from the typical SWAT game, which tends to be quite slow paced. Our game would be a lot more action heavy. We set it in the near-ish future and wanted to have a somewhat international theme. The idea of a special SWAT unit sent out worldwide to deal with organised crime and terrorists was dreamt up. This global strike team would give the game its new name. The engine and toolset were initially developed to take advantage of the Xbox with all its new features like bump mapping, 3D textures and so on. However, we realised that to be commercially viable we needed a PlayStation 2 port too. Luckily, Argonaut had some pretty good PS2 experience and we could leverage a lot of the code already written for other games. Unluckily, the PS2's capabilities were seriously lacking compared to the Xbox, so we had to come up with some pretty creative rendering solutions. A pretty cool thing we added, rather late in the day, was support for voice commands, ordering your team around using the Xbox's microphone. We knocked up some internal tests to do voice recognition, but ultimately we bought in a package to do it for us. That's the background. Next video I'll go into some of the detail of producing SWAT's artwork.